Did the ancient Irish invent the werewolf? Why are werewolves associated with Samhain and Halloween? How the heck did Wolfwalkers not win the Oscar for Best Animated Feature? These are just some of the questions I'm going to tackle as we wander into the woods in search of Irish werewolves. From the Morgan transforming into a black crow or raven, to the children of Lear transforming into swans, to a Tane transforming into a bejeweled fly, to Tuan Mackerel transforming into a stag, then a boar, then an eagle or hawk, then a salmon, before finally being reborn as a human after someone eats the salmon, Irish myths and legends are filled with tales of therianthropy, people changing into animals. To quote Alistair Neal, co-founder of TransCeltic.com, therianthropy, which is the mythological ability of human beings to metamorphose into other animals by means of shape-shifting, continued with the spread of Christianity into the Celtic lands. Holding on to many of the traditions of pre-Christian belief systems could well have facilitated the conversion of the people to the new religion being introduced at the time. We know that many of the dates used for Christian celebrations were taken from those for existing Celtic ones for this very purpose. One such date, of of course, is October 31st slash November 1st, which is when the Gaelic, aka Goidelic speaking Celts celebrated their new year, Samhain. The Celts measured their days evening to evening, FYI, hence Samhain technically began on the evening of October 31st. When the Christians came along, they claimed November 1st as All Saints Day, aka All Hallows Day, thus the 31st of October became All Hallows Eve, or Halloween, a day that has long been associated with werewolves and other creatures that go bump in the night. Turns out there's a good reason for that, which we'll get to in a second. But first, I think it's important to reflect on the idea that Irish stories of people changing into animals, including big bad wolves, didn't disappear with Christianization because the church found them useful. Such stories could be reshaped and finessed and recast with Christian characters. Granted, not all tales of Irish wolfmen and Irish wolf women were successfully sanitized. The Daughters of Eretek. The Daughters of Eretek are perhaps the earliest example of Irish werewolves, aka wolfwalkers, aka lycanthropes, aka fuela in Irish mythology. Every Samhain, at the behest of their father Eretek, the trio of sisters would leave their home, the cave of Cruachan, an entrance to the other world, transform into wolves, and raid the Irish countryside for sustenance. Like so many other Irish monsters, including Elaine McMidgena, who may or may not be a dragon, the sisters choose Samhain as their date to wreak mayhem because that is when the veil between this world and the other world world is at its thinnest. That's when the cave of Kraken transforms from mere geological feature to supernatural portal, at least according to the myths. And of course, that's how Halloween became associated with ghosts and ghouls and goblins and werewolves in the first place. During Samhain, the Celts believed these beastly beings were crossing over and attacking their herds and harvests. Hence, they started leaving out offerings and dressing up in costumes in order to blend in with or scare away the offending fiends. Or in the case of the daughters of Eretek, the Celts distract them with music. As as the story goes, a warrior of the Fianna, Kas Korak, having encountered the three Lupine sisters when Samhain, convinces them to change back into their human forms so they might better appreciate the enchanting tunes he had been strumming on his harp. The ruse works. The sisters shed their wolf skins and assume their human forms. Then, Quilta Macronan, cousin and or nephew of Finn McCool and famously the slayer of the ocean god Lear, promptly dispatches all three sisters with a single toss of his spear. No word on whether Quilta Macronan's spear tip was made of silver. P.S. If you want to a longer version of this Irish werewolf myth, The Daughters of Eretek, you can check out the retelling I wrote for Enchanted Conversations magazine a few years back. It also appears in my book, Irish Monsters in Your Pocket. The Manwolves of Ossery Arguably the most famous werewolves from Irish myth and legend, the Manwolves of Ossery first appeared in Gerald of Wales's 12th century work Topographia Hibernica, Topography of Ireland. In it, Gerald writes of a wandering priest who gives the last rites to a dying wolf that claims it is actually an old woman who's been transformed. She and her husband, also a talking wolf, tell the priest that they are natives of Ossery, a medieval Irish kingdom that comprised what is now County Kilkenny and Western County Leash. If their story is to be believed, the couple are cursed to live as animals every seven years. Years. Although in some versions of the tale they're able to leave their human bodies in a lifeless state while traveling as wolves, which much more closely resembles what we see in the animated feature Wolf Walkers. More about that soon. The Manwolves of Ossery are sometimes said to be the descendants of the gods of Ireland, the Tua de Danann, while other origin stories peg them as the descendants of Lanek Fela, ancestor of the original kings of Ossery. And this makes me wonder, is the Irish werewolf synonym Fuela derived from the name Fela? I couldn't find anything on this, so if you have information, please leave a comment 
comment and let me know. I'm also definitely reaching here, but it's interesting that the name Ossery is similar to Osser, a hound from Irish mythology belonging to the Leinster King Mac Dato, which could outrun all other hounds. Of course, there is a more grounded explanation for the appearance of wolf men and wolf women in Irish myths, legends, and folk tales. As author Charles Solomon notes in his book, The Art of Wolf Walkers, Irish warriors often dressed in wolf skins when they went wolfing, i.e. when they went on raiding expeditions. Whatever their origin, the Manwolves of Ossery clearly made an impression on a young Tom Moore, future founder of the Kilkenny-based animation studio Cartoon Saloon, who first learned of the legend while attending a young Irish filmmakers program. To quote Tom, I remembered a lady named Angela Walsh talking about the Wolves of Ossery and thinking even then it could be a good idea for a film or comic book, end quote. Turns out it was a great idea. Wolfwalkers, the greatest werewolf story ever told. Directed by Tom Moore and Ross Stewart, the Academy Award-nominated Wolfwalkers is the final installment in Moore's Irish folklore trilogy. The 2020 film follows his previous Celtic fantasy adventure films Song of the Sea, 2014, and The Secret of Kells, 2009, both of which, like Wolfwalkers, earned Oscar noms for Best Animated Feature. From the moment you start watching Wolfwalkers, you'll notice immediately that the animation style is nothing like the three-dimensional Disney-slash-Pixar fare we've all grown accustomed to in recent decades decades. Moore's dedication to the traditional craft of hand-drawn 2D animation combined with the swirling, intricate patterns of ancient Irish art creates the illusion of an illuminated medieval manuscript brought to life. Every shot of Wolfwalkers is an illustration worthy of framing and hanging on a wall. But to be clear, the film is more than just a series of pretty pictures. The story, a work of historical fiction, takes place in the town of Kilkenny in 1650 during Oliver Cromwell's invasion of Ireland. Cromwell, voiced by Simon McBurney, calls upon hunter Bill Goodfellow, Sean Bean, to exterminate a wolf pack living in the nearby woods. But his Goodfellow's rebellious daughter Robin, on an EFC, soon discovers not all members of said pack are ordinary wolves. Robin, who is training to become a wolf hunter like her father, befriends the mysterious Maeve, Eva Whitaker, who naturally, or supernaturally I should say, turns out to be a wolf walker. As a wolf walker, Maeve's spirit takes the form of a wolf and she roams the woods in search of her missing mother while her human body sleeps. This unlikely friendship is soon put to the ultimate test as Robin is torn between two worlds. The civil Civilized Cromwellian Ireland, championed by her father, and the wild Ireland of Maeve and the Wolfwalkers. To quote more, the main theme of the story is trying to find the balance that we need between nature and wildness, order and stability, rules and structure. Source, The Hollywood Reporter. And what is a werewolf but that struggle for balance made manifest? A werewolf is a supernatural being that oscillates between human and monster tame and wild. On a positive note, Irish folklore often shows werewolves succeeding in their struggle to, you know, not maim and eat people. When I talked to author Patrick Winters about his Irish werewolf story, The Fuela, which appears in my short story collection, Neon Druid, he told me his goal was to, quote, explore the concept of Irish werewolves acting as heroic guardian figures, as opposed to the mindless monsters we often see in modern werewolf interpretations, end quote. Is the werewolf an Irish invention? While Ireland certainly has a long history of sharing hair-raising tales of human-to-animal transformations, evidence suggests that werewolves go back, way back, to even before the emergence of Celtic languages and mythologies. Indeed, the symbolism of people changing into wolves or dogs likely has its roots in Proto-Indo-European mythology. Granted, that's all pretty theoretical. More recently, and I use that term lightly, Herodotus described people transforming into wolves in his histories, which he wrote in 430 BCE. For reference, the Celts likely didn't even settle in Ireland until 400 or 300 BCE. Not that there weren't people in Ireland before that, there were, who could have passed on stories of werewolves, it's just that we don't have any evidence that can prove the Irish werewolf stories are older than the Greek ones. And that's because apart from Ogham inscriptions, nothing really got written down in Ireland until the arrival of Christian scribes. So while the Irish can't lay claim to having invented the werewolf, I think it's fair to say they've succeeded in reshaping werewolf lore and helping people discover the beauty hidden away in these tales of ferocious beasts. If you enjoyed this video, please like and comment and basically just tap all of the shiny buttons and by the end of it, make sure you are subscribed to the Irish Myths channel. That really, really helps. And if you want to learn more about other monsters from Irish mythology, check out my book, Irish Monsters in Your Pocket, a tiny little book about Irish dragons, werewolves, vampires, banshees, headless horsemen, and other beastly beings. Irish Monsters in Your Pocket is the third book in my Celtic Pocket Guides series, and you can find links to it in the other two books in the series. Samhain in Your Pocket and Irish Myths in Your Pocket in the description below. My name is I.E. Neverday, editor of the short story collection Neon Druid and creator of IrishMyths.com. Thanks for coming out.